Okay, here we are with another video. This is our introduction to a new statistics topic called estimation. And in statistics, estimation has a special meaning. It's kind of like what we usually mean by estimation, but a little different. Here we go. But first, the recap. We've been doing a lot of different types of simulations. We've done one collection things, like when we were just rolling dice. We've done two collections where there's a source and then we collect measures and a prototype for that is the Aunt Belinda problem where we flipped 20 coins and she got 16 and we saw tried to figure out whether she has special powers. We've done three collections where we have a source collection and then you scramble one of the value one of the attributes and then you collect measures and a prototype for that is difference in income where we're trying to see whether that could be due to chance. The thing that's common for all of these is we're trying to find some probability. And in general, we, we're going to find that we call the probability the p-value. That's in this last learning goal that we've had. And we're always comparing to the null hypothesis. And often statisticians say comparing to the null. It's sort of this snazzy shorthand we say. And the null hypothesis, remember, is the thing where nothing special is going on. With Aunt Belinda, the null hypothesis is the coin is fair and she has no special power, so the probability of heads is 0 0.5. Okay? Going on with the recap, uh, for example, now suppose we have a coin and we're going to change Aunt Belinda slightly. And we're not sure it's fair. So we flip it 20 times and we get 15 heads. Sounds suspicious, but we're not sure if that could be due to chance or not. So even though we think it might not be fair, we assume that the true probability, which I call p true, is 0.5, because that's the null hypothesis. It's a fair coin. Then we compute a p-value. Now you do that through the measures mechanism, and you get a graph that might look like this. Now this graph of measures shows, on the right-hand side, the value 15 and the selected cases and that amounts to about 20 cases altogether so that's about 2% and so if P is small in this case 2% is less than our sort of usual edge 5% we reject the idea that the coin is fair that is we say oops something hinky is going on here coin is not fair okay now on to estimation estimation involves a new question and here's the setup for the parallel estimation question. You take the same coin, you get 15 heads out of 20, and our question is, what is the true probability of heads? See how that's different from what we were doing before? The is it fair is a different question. We want to know what is the true probability. Our best estimate clearly is 15 out of 20, which is 0 0.75. Duh. Right? But remember we were talking about we don't want just a single number. What's the range of probabilities that are plausible? There's that plausible again. So here's how we approach it. We're going to do an activity. And we're going to look at all the possible probabilities, the possible true probabilities, and find out which of them, for which of them, this 15 out of 20 is plausible. Now, of course, you can't really do all the plausible probabilities. That's all the numbers between 0 and 1. So we're just going to take 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so far up to 1.0. And that means you're going to do 11 total simulations. And for each one of these probabilities, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you're going to make a simulation to test whether it's plausible to get 15 out of 20 heads. And that's doing the same thing we've been doing, like Aunt Belinda. And so you want to know for which of these 11 true probabilities is 15 heads plausible. And you're going to use 0.05 as the edge p-value. So for example, this is going to be source and measure, no scrambling. You're going to make a collection with 20 coins in it. And those coins are going to need a random number function. And so it's going to start, suppose we're doing 0 0.2 right now. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, we're going to do 0 0.2. You're going to start if random is less than 0 0.2, so it might look like this. If random is less than 0 0.2, it's either going to be heads or tails, like that formula in the illustration. And so you're going to get a collection, looks maybe like that. Notice how there are more tails than heads, because 0.2 is the probability of heads, the more tails. So then you want to collect a measure. Might call it n heads. 
and it's going to have a formula like this, count of coins equals heads. It's coins because coins is the name of the variable and heads is its value, and we're counting how many times coins is equal to heads. All right? Then you're going to collect a thousand measures, which is going to be a sampling distribution, and it might look something like this. This is the graph for p equals 0 0.2, and as you can see, it is completely implausible that if the true probability were 0 0.2, you would get 15 out of 20 heads. So 0 0.2 is not in our interval. It's not in the range that we want. When you come to the end, you're going to find the two edges of this range of probability, plausibility. At the minimum true value, when it's as small as possible, 15 is going to be at the top of the distribution, at the upper tail. At the maximum, 15 is going to be at the lower tail. And in between, 15 will be in the middle of the distribution. And when 15 is in the middle of the distribution, that's exactly what we mean by plausible. So what you're going to get is an interval, a range of probabilities that we think are plausible probabilities for getting 15 out of 20 heads. And that's going to be the main homework. Got it? Good.